Hi everyone, welcome. What you see here inside this box is a vermi bag tote. And in my vermi bag tote, I've got African night crawlers. I've got two systems with African night crawlers in them. And in the African night crawler systems, I've got a little bit of a problem going on with um, a mite infestation. These little tiny white mites. And over the past number of weeks and days, I've been trying to eliminate the mites. Most recently, I've been trying to use cantaloupe to see if I could bait the mites out of the um, system and you know it's been working pretty good over the past few days I've managed to round up a whole bunch of mites using this cantaloupe here as bait and you can see the little white spots on it more recently a few days ago I also added pineapple and I was becoming skeptical as to whether the pineapple is going to attract any mites but it does seem like that it's working as well after the first day of it being in there, first day or two, it seemed like it seemed like the mites had no interest in the pineapple, but it does seem like they've, um, over time, gradually started to take a shine to it. But um, it was just interesting to see how many worms have come up to take advantage of the moisture coming off of this uh, piece of cantaloupe. Initially, it seemed like the cantaloupe wasn't doing much in terms of attracting worms, I mean, a few came up here and there, and I think mainly for the moisture, perhaps not so much for the the fruit itself. But it, is, it has been a very, very long time since this, uh, since this system, since both systems were last fed, over three weeks ago. So uh, I, I believe that the main reason that these worms are up here is for the moisture, but who knows, maybe it is for the food. But Jesus, like a huge mound of worms that have come up to hang out right on top of and underneath the cantaloupe so uh not quite as many mites on here as i would expect and i just wonder if it might have something to do with the fact that the worms have sort of taken over but as i've been doing lately i'm just going to do what uh i'm going to do what i've been doing lately which is to just Give all these materials that seem to have mites on them a rinse. And um, every time I do this, this will be maybe the third or fourth time of me rinsing mites off of the bait that I've been putting out here for them. I feel like every time I round up a certain number of mites and rinse them away, I'm gradually combating the infestation and reducing their overall numbers. And um, in the past, I have actually rinsed off the paper, too, but sometimes the paper just seems like it's got so many little baby worms all over it. It seems like getting them all off would be virtually impossible, so I don't bother. And, you know, it, it almost seems like just the number of mites that are congregating here, it might not even be um, too much of an issue here anymore. So... Let me go rinse this one. We'll be back in a moment. And now that we've rinsed all the vermicompost and mites off of these two pieces of bait, three pieces of bait, we can see that they've really done a number on the meaty portion of the melon and there's so little of it left. But we're going to restore the bait just the way it was. But just to return to something I said a moment ago, the whole concept of um, getting things back to normal in these bins. You know, by that I just mean like I said earlier, there's been no feedings happening in these bins, um, driven mostly by the desire to cut the mites down by withholding feedings and taking away the temptation of the mites to come, um, you know, come together and breed and multiply and thrive on a never-ending supply of food. So, besides withholding feedings, I've also been leaving the systems to air dry without covering them up with plastic, they become quite dry. And, you know, that too, I wonder if that's got something to do with, you know, the worms coming up here to take advantage of this little haven of moisture that's been laid out here as, you know, bait. So the bait is not only the food, but it's also the moisture. Um, so I do look forward to the opportunity to, to get these systems back to what I consider as normal, normal feedings, Normal covering up with plastic to help hold the moisture in the system, not let it evaporate away. 
But for now, I think I'm just going to continue with the baiting, even though in this case it does seem like we only baited a, a fairly small number of mites. Maybe we are approaching the goal here of getting rid of them. But I'd really like to just continue a little while longer with this. You know, I don't, I don't want these um, plastic to be sitting up high. I'd rather have it sort of flush resting on the surface so that the moisture that comes up out of the bed doesn't evaporate. At least under the plastic, I'd like for it to sort of gather and collect even maybe condense on the plastic and recirculate. So in this bin it seems like we're actually approaching the objective of doing away with the mites. But we've got two systems where I'm taking these approaches to try to reduce my mite numbers. So let's go get the other system out here and see how that one's doing. So here in the second system where I've got pretty much the same situation going on, it seems like the worms weren't quite as compelled to come up here to see what's going on and that might be because I believe that this system probably has a greater amount of moisture down within the bed so I'm starting to get a little concerned that the other system might be a little bit drier than it needs to be and potentially causing a little bit of distress for the, the worm population. I'm anxious to get um, I'm anxious to get these systems covered up again in plastic because you can see right here where the plastic was, how nice and damp it is. All the moisture that's down low trying to come up, you know, recirculates like in a terrarium. Not allowing it to get really dry. Um, and that's probably why the worms are coming up in the other system to come take advantage of that moisture. However, here, um, hopefully it's because the worms are quite content to be down low. And, um, and don't feel the need to come up for the moisture collecting up high. And here the the bait station is really um, more about collecting mites and here we could certainly see that the uh, the bait has done the job collecting a whole bunch of um, additional mites uh, in addition to what they collected um, up until now. There's a whole bunch on this piece of paper here too, and I'm wondering if I just leave it for a moment out here in these bright lights. Perhaps these worms will just squirm off the paper, and then I could give this piece of paper a rinse too. Even though the paper in the other system didn't seem like it needed too much of a rinse, so I didn't bother. Over here it seems like there are a lot of mites on this paper, and I'd like to rinse it. So I'll go rinse off the fruit, maybe in a couple minutes when I get back. We'll see fewer worms here, and I could do the same with the paper. Um, or maybe even replace the paper, but the first thing is going to be to get those worms off of there and just give them some time to get off on their own. All right, in the meantime, I'm going to go grab this fruit here, head over to the sink, and flush these mites. You know, I'm back from the sink. You can see that there's a little bit of meaty, fleshy port of the melon remaining on this one. Which is unusual considering how much um, how much of a I think higher mite population there is in the system. Although maybe the reason for the reduction of the um, the soft meaty part of the melon in the other bin is the presence of all those worms. It might have been the worms that nibbled all that off. But back here in the bin, as you can see, the the bright lights have worked, and the worms have, in the matter of just a couple minutes, for the most part evacuated the paper. I think for the last couple holdouts I'll just kind of intervene here and help them off. Then we can get this paper rinsed off as well. Well you can see the uh, piece of paper is now free of mites but it has just been so <laughs> so beaten up torn up into pieces, it just didn't survive the rinsing. It just started falling apart in my hands. And um, I just figured, you know what, what's the big deal? We're going to replace that piece of paper. So I've got another coffee filter here. So I'll tear that in half and we'll, uh, we'll get that nice and damp and lay that out as the platform before we reset our bait. So let me do that really quick. 
I'm gonna use both hands for that, so we'll return return in a moment. All right, so this replacement piece of paper has been thoroughly soaked, so much so that there's even a little puddle here in the middle of it. And, um, and here's the old piece that I'm just gonna recycle. It'll just turn into bedding at some point in the future when I get around to feeding these systems again, which I hope can happen soon. Because, um, because gosh, after three weeks of not adding any food to these systems, you know, I'm sure there's still stuff that they could be eating down low, but it's more about the, the moisture content that comes into the systems with the food. It just seems like these systems could really benefit from a nice shot of dampness. And, um, and the food always provides a good bit of that. But I think when it comes time to restore feedings and restore the plastic coverings to, you know, cause the recirculation of the moisture in the systems, I might actually even um, supplement the moisture in the bins just by spraying some moisture into them. All right, so it does seem like we're making progress, perhaps more so in the other system than here, because here we're still seeing quite a number of mites showing up for the... Um, for the bait on each occasion but um hopefully we'll start seeing even fewer here too then we'll know we're close to the finish line so that's where we stand now after i don't know how many days has it been about five six days or so of baiting mites out of our worm bins so that's it for today hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did as always please remember to leave me a thumbs up that's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.